Okay, we're at the Pam studio and we're going to be doing a corrective makeup on Rachel using mud palettes, using Makeup Forever and using Ben Nye. Um, and then we'll be doing a quick way to turn it into evening sparkle with Marie Dion. Okay, let's start. I'm going to put a primer on Rachel. Now, this is the new mud primer. It's a really good product. goes on very, it's quite liquidy. I don't let that put you off. Um, so I'm just going to dust that all over. I'm also using the new Makeup Forever brush, which is to die for. It's absolutely fantastic. We all want it. Um, the shaft bit here stays clean, doesn't mark, but it just feels really nice in the hand, a really nice product. So using mud, this is a new thing in the UK, but um, Marie's just used it on an actress on a job we've just worked on for eight weeks, yeah. and it worked really well. This is a little palette that's been put together um, as you can see, it folds right over, but we've got base, blusher, and some eye, eye colours there. And I'm just dipping my brush in the mixer, and I'm just going to go... It, it moves. Don't be deceived when you first see it, because it feels a bit stiff, but once you've got a little bit of mixer on your brush, I can't tell you how nicely it moves around the face. Uh, and you found that, Marie, didn't you, when yeah. you used it on Joe? What I found, the combination of the primer with the actual foundation really looked natural, made the skin look alive. So you've got a bit of the primer which has a sheen to it coming through, so it didn't look flat. Also, it covers quite well, doesn't it? Rachel needs a little bit more coverage up on her forehead. Um, and the rest of her skin is gorgeous, but um, just on her forehead she needs a bit more, so you can put it on a little bit heavier there. Um, my goodness, these brushes are... This brush is definitely going to go in my kit. And also I think it helps control the amount you apply on so you can get more coverage as you go along and it will still move with the primer underneath. How does that feel, Rachel? Really nice. Brush feels really soft as well. I think we'll all be fighting for this brush. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now Rachel's got great bones but they just need bringing out a bit. So the best thing to do is sort of feel the skin. You can feel where the shadow, the natural shadow is, which is just there. And just very lightly, I'm just going to paint in a tiny bit. If I brush my strokes upward, I'm doing a nice tiny bit of shading. Can you see? This does also work. I mean, Rachel hasn't got a double chin. If she did have a double chin, you could do it. The key here is to keep it light, because otherwise you end up with brown stripes on your face. So um, if I go that way. While I do that, Marie is going to be doing some cover using the mud. Um, they do correctors. I think in uh, is it blue? They do red. Yeah, blue, blue and red tones. Take that hair out of the way. So just taking that there. I think we can get away with that. If you if you're looking in the mirror, you put your head down, but you keep looking up, and then you'll see exactly. I mean, Rachel's hardly got any, but you obviously, if you put your highlight in the wrong area, you're going to be making your bag worse. So you just want to highlight just in those, and it's always good um, with this colour skin to have a bit of warmth in there because that knocks out the darkness. So just going in there with a bit of light, but it's got a tiny bit of this strong orange in. I'm mixing it again with a little bit of mixer. It is quite thick, but that you just use the mixer to thin it. You can get the sheerest base imaginable. And then I'm just patting this in with my foundation brush. Although this is a big brush, you can see how easily it fits into because it's so beautifully shaped. And Marie's doing the same her side. For blusher, I'm switching to the Makeup Forever because this palette is just so amazing. The colours are so beautiful, really lovely. And another one of their beautiful brushes. This is number 140. Um, so I'm just going to have a little dip in. Again, I always rub it on my hands. Now, blusher for me, in the apple of the cheek is always better. We've got the shading there. So if I ask Rachel to smile, and then we're just going to a little bit goes a long way. But if you do that sort of circular motion, just gently taking it up. It's so much more flattering than in the 70s, the orange stripe that used to start up here for some reason. I mean, that's naturally where you'd have a bit of colour. So I think that's more than enough. I'm just pressing that in with my foundation brush. And the, the beauty of 
cream blusher is it goes under the skin. It doesn't sit on top like powder blushes. So I would always have a cream blusher as my first. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, Girls, I cream agree. blusher always. Yeah, it just moves better, and it, also again you can control the consistency better. And then I think because you put the powder on top, you sort of push it in. It just looks nicer. Mm. It just always looks nicer. Also, I think using cream foundation with a cream on top, yeah. it just moves nicer. So there we are, ready for powder now. Okay, this is the best yellow, yellowy toned powder on the market, it's called buttercream. Just look at that colour, it's so fine, it's so beautiful, it's, it's really lovely. But you know, a tiny bit, you really don't need very much. So, and, and also it's important to press it in, that's why it's better to use a puff, not a brush for this bit. So if we just go lightly over Rachel's face, particularly obviously in the T-zone, because that's where it's going to be at its shiniest. And you know, a little bit of sheen on the, um, on the cheeks, is quite nice. I'm just going to do her eyelids as well. Actually, this powder buff is really good for getting in, getting right into those corners and right up under the eye. And I'm hardly using any powder at all. It's a sort of rolling motion that sort of makeup artists just use. You can brush off any excess afterwards with a brush. You really just need to, to set it. You're setting the makeup. But, but not using a heavy amount. It's really, really light. And you can still see we've got sheen there. It's, it's, it's here that we need it. Um, I'm starting the eyes, so we're using the Makeup Forever Eye Primer. Um, this is good for all over the lid. Um, it just helps set your eyeshadows. So the, the first thing you're going to do, Marisa, is an eye flick, isn't it? Eye line, is that right? Yeah. Yep. Just gives the eyelid a nice, smooth tone. It's, if you, if you, once we do go on to the evening look and put an eyeshadows on, this also helps prevent creasing. So um, eye, eye, eyeshadows going into horrible creases. There we are. So eyeliner, which is Marie is absolutely brilliant at, and it is always a problem because that that flick, that Alexa Chung look that everybody has, is um, can be really scary to do with liquid eyeliners because they're so unforgiving. So um, Marie's going to show us the method she uses to get that kind of look, and she's starting with the gel. Is that right, Marie? Start yeah, with a gel. That's correct. A gel or a cream, anything really that's a bit more fluid, and you can control it with your own brush. So your choice of brush. Mine is quite a narrow thin, thin brush, because I like to build my eyeliner up, um, especially depending on your eye shape. So, you know, some people have more, um, more of a gap on their lid, which therefore you can achieve a thicker eye line. Uh, and also some people have more of a droopy eye, so it's obviously easier if the person's eye actually has got that kind of hay, uh, that kind of almondy shape. Absolutely. So with the droop, so with Rachel's eyes, which Rachel looks straight into camera, let's see, so beautiful green colour, but they're fairly round, aren't yeah. they? So it shouldn't be too hard to work with. So, but what we need to achieve is a really thin line starting here okay. and coming out slightly thicker towards the end. Because um, also, what we want to savour is you want to see some of her, yeah. her lid. Yeah. Um, but if you have got a big lid, then obviously you can go thicker with your eyeliner. Um, so it's better to do it in steps. Just gradually build up time builds mm. it up mm -hmm. um, but the reason I use a cream first is you get more control and then you liquid you can go over the top and be a bit more precise yeah so we're starting with the cream so, so that's made the brush really flat Marie which is great it gives you a it makes it a very precise thing doesn't it yeah just helps you get into those right into the corners and the great thing about eyeliner is this kind of flick works Daytime looks really sophisticated and good, and it also works for the evening, and it will last that long, won't it? Absolutely, it takes you from day into night, and then you can just add on top of it. But it, eyeliner does tend to last longer than eyeshadows. Okay, let's start the flick. Okay, so what I'm going to do is obviously we've got the powder puff, um, just helps it set you settle your hand. So obviously. Ever, sometimes people worry about shaping, Shake. mm. so I think if you just rest it, that helps. Um, and also you're going back to the flattest point, so Rachel's closing. Also it's really important that you get 
Rachel to look open and close. That's just go it stage by stage. I think that's really important because I think a lot of people do the flick with the eye closed or pulling their eye up, and then of course when they, you've almost got to put the flick in or def refine it when the eye's open because it's yeah. only then that you see your flick, really, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to ask Rachel, so I've had a look at her eye shape now to so have an idea of where actually I can go to. What you're, what you're better off doing is not coming on your first stroke right to the very end. So I'm going to start from about here to not the very end because also I want to see where, yeah. you know, where, how high we want the flick to go. Okay. So Rachel, close your eyes. That's nice and that's nice and close to the lashes as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because it is important to get that. Also, once you've got a bit on there, it helps you kind of. It almost grabs. It helps yeah. Your, the yeah. brush sort of yeah. attached to it. Now I know that I'm going to go. I've got a thin line here. I've got good control. Um, so I'm just going to keep edging a little bit more in and. So you're making it slightly thicker or just extending your line? Just extending my line, but because I, I've, I'm happy with how thin mm -hmm, the brush mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. and the eye line is um, achieving, I'm going just in there. So you're just coming up a bit more. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to let Rachel open her eye so I can see what's happening. So we've got a nice thin line here mm. and it's slightly gradually getting thicker there. Mm. But I've stopped just before the end of her lashes here because if I go all the way down there, I'm not sure where you, I want my eyeliner to you. flick up. Yeah. If you went all the way down there, it might be too too much going down before you go up. Absolutely. So I see your point. Yep. Yeah. This is where you need to open the eye or have the person open. Or if you're doing it yourself, this is where you need to open your eye and work out where your flick's going to be. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm like the thin thinness of the inner eye here. So I'm actually going to ask Rachel to look down not close her eye, but to look down and then look to her left. And this stretches out the eyelid. So if you have got any creases or wrinkles, Rachel hasn't, but it just helps stretch this inner corner. Uh, so then it means you get a flat line. Cause Otherwise, sometimes you get, a, you get a wiggly line because the, the wrinkles, if they're not stretched out, actually make it. Yeah. Oh, that's a useful tip. So it's stretched out, Rachel's looking down. So I'm just getting right in there. And open, Rachel. So That's lovely. Right into the inside line there. There's no, there's no bleeding. You know that awful thing where you put the liquid on liners on sometimes and the person closes their eye yeah. and you get the imprint up there. So that looks nice and clean. Yeah. So Rachel, just look at me for a moment. So I'm happy to keep that as a really thin line. And I think we just need to start thickening it out here. And also, I can look at Rachel's eye with it open and think, OK, so we need... I want it to start sloping up around here. So I'm just going to put a little dot there just to guide me. OK, and open for me. See, again... That's so beautifully clean. So, Rachel, I want her to look now so I can see. Am I happy where that's finished? Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. OK, so again, this is why it's really important to have a, a thin brush. Okay, so I'm going to ask, I've decided now where I'm going to put my flick. So Rachel's looking at me and I can see where I need to go. So if you close your eye for me. And open. And that just has given me an idea of... of Am I happy with that flick? Don't worry about uh, making any mistakes. You can just get the cotton bud and clean it up. Off. Yeah. Don't don't worry about any mistakes with eyeliner. It can be recovered. Okay. So I'm going to get Rachel to close her eye because I, what, what I want to do is, if you've got any wrinkles which Rachel doesn't have, I wanted to be able to stretch the skin on her lid. So if Rachel, if you open for me, and just look down, but don't close your eyes, and then look to your left. It stretches out this part of the lid, so you're able to achieve a really, really stretched thin line without it. Without it wrinkling? Because that's a really useful tip, because it's so often wrinkles in that inner corner, particularly the older you get. Absolutely. So that's a nice clean line you've got down there, and it's really lovely because it's close to the lashes. And if you open up for me, I can see how far, and it's given the depth of the eye as well. 
Um, so you've got a nice graduation, you've got thin, mm -hmm. it starts to gradually go thicker mm -hmm. towards the end. Um, you need to figure out, what happens is people carry on their flick and they just go, they just keep going and actually you need to see where the skin and where actually how high you want the how flick How high you want go. the flick, yeah. So Rachel, have you closed for me and open for me? Again, I'm just seeing, if your eye droops, you've got, you, you have a tip, what you're better off doing is not going to the end of the lashes. I got you. And cheating it. Yeah, so taking the line higher towards the end, is that yes. right? Yep. So with Rachel, her eyes don't droop, so I can actually take the eyeliner quite close to her end lashes. Um, so that's a little cheat. If you've got droopy eyes, just don't come to the very end. Yeah. And then if you keep your eyes open, just exactly where I've got my um, brush here. If Rachel closes, I'm not moving my hand there, but I'm just going to where I want my mouth to go. So I'll go over the cream eyeliner now, just for those of you who do like to use liquid. So this is the Makeup Forever Precision Liquid Eyeliner and Marie will show you the brush. It is yeah. very, very precise. You can get a really fine line. So I'm going to get Rachel to close and uh, I'm going to go over this cream eyeliner. Again, it's more for if you want that liquid look. Mm, just adds more depth, doesn't yeah. it? A little bit more. So at first, actually, I'm just going to rest it on the lash line. So rest your brush. I think because they're waterproof as well, that adds a, yet another layer, doesn't it? Another, yeah. another. Absolutely. And because I know it's got this really fine point, I'm just going to, not actually going to, I'm not going to pull it across too much. It just helps give another depth to the eyeliner. And Rachel, will you open again for me? And I'm going to get you to look down and to the left. And again, it's stretching the eye out with this really nice fine point. In. And I'm just with this lovely fine tip brush, I'm just going to go in those inner, inner corners. Take your time. Don't feel you have to drag it. We are lucky that Rachel keeps her eyes very steady. I'm just going to look normal. Okay, see, again, I'm still happy with my eyeliner. Close for me. I'm just going to follow where we've already put the cream liner just to give that more liquidy look. So we finished the eyeliner look. This is our daytime look, a little bit of blusher. We've done all of that. Marie's just going to finish off now by just combing through. Um, Rachel's got lovely shaped eyebrows. They're not over plucked. She's just going to tidy them up with this um, Makeup Forever Brow Seal, which is just almost like a clear gel for brows. Just brushing them, keeps, it keeps them in place. Um, it's a, quite a nice, you can see how it frames the eye. And then we, we've powdered, and then maybe just a little bit of lip gloss, do you think, Marie? The mud, there's a nice mud one there, isn't there? Um. Not everyone has time to do lip liners and everything like that, so just a bit, a little bit. Of this is so sheer as well, though. It, you, it doesn't, it's not that defined, is it? It just adds a nice, it's such a lovely, lovely peachy colour.